we're going to take a look at bills. Um, bills are the fourth tab. We're going to go through this fairly quickly as well. This could actually be its own training. Um, it's not something that I have in practice used at all in probably three or four years. And so um, a lot of what I'm talking to you about is from memory and, and following along here. So when you click on bills in the patron interface, um, you will be confronted with this page, which includes uh, the summary of things that are owed, things that have been billed um, and paid. And this is essentially just an arithmetic function going on here. Um, and then anything else that has to do with this. If I select a bill, you'll see some things owed for selected, um, billed for selected, the same type of arithmetic, but not for the total. Down at the bottom of the page, you see we have yet another grid with some options. Before we go to that, I want to go back and just point to the tab itself, which um, gives just that, that snapshot glimpse of what that patron still owes. So in this case, um, if we go to, um, and, and I am, am missing a thing, I believe that this is out of uh, order. So I'm gonna skip ahead there and we may end up going back there. There are bills on Kayla's account. And if I select one, as always with a grid, it's going to activate the actions button and you can see that I have options f dealing with bills for her. Um, I can select everything there and pay them, but if, if she perchance wanted to just pay um, one of the bills or just part of what she owed, um, there is some nuance to selecting there how to do that. She just wanted to pay the $5 for the, um, the bookkeeping correction, or it's not a bookkeeping correction. It's something where some money has actually, there's been an adjustment to that. She wants to pay that, that um, balance there. You could deselect the other bill that lost uh, materials processing, and then it would show just the $5 um, as the selected and pay that, and it would be applied toward that, not toward the whole thing. Um, if you can do some actions to all of the bills there, um, I am always of a mind to be as careful and deliberate about anything related to money as possible. Because while you may not use Evergreen to balance the books, um, it is a, and but you may, <laughs> in which case there, there is actually a statutory obligation for tax funded institutions to balance. And so whatever is done here with money needs to be done in such a way that it, it is a, as accurate as possible, not only for the patron's side, but also for the library's accountability. Um, so from here, I can uh, go in and can look at um, the statements, transaction statements, and that's going to uh, essentially show similar dialogue as what is uh, shown on the receipts for, for some of these things. Um, this billing interface, it 
it does its it does its job but it has a lot of information and it's not always intuitive and so i always recommend that um well people pay attention and, and they they read what the, those screens are so we have here the statement we have uh an item summary and this would be from uh, selecting um, full details to go in to view these things. Um, I can then click on transaction details and that's going to show um, everything that has happened with that thing. Have there, he, these are the bills that have been billed and then in this case there have been no payments applied toward that. This can be particularly handy if you have a patron that has a lot of questions about the bill, um, which definitely happens. And then you may need to bill a patron. In, in a lot of cases, billing is automatic. If it is uh, something like overdue fines, that's something that is generated and applied by the ILS. If it is a lost material, that's an automatic thing. Um, or damaged could be an automatic thing as well. If something goes to collections, that tends to be an automatic thing um, because of the communication between Unique Management and Evergreen. But there are cases where we need to create a bill. And so what would be done in that case is you are in the patron account and you click bill patron. It opens this uh, modal here for you to select the billing type to input the amount and you can also add a note. From the drop down there are a variety of options that you can choose um, and you can see all the different things that um, are not necessarily punitive type things. I mean, somebody is paying a non-resident fee or they are paying a plaque fee or um, if there is an established uh, meeting room cost or deposit, that, that type of thing. Um, this provides a variety of ways to account for that. In this case, it is a replacement card and it is, uh, the charge for that is $2. Click Submit Bill and then you see that it is reflected now in the account. The summary now shows an additional $2 that has been added up in the tab. And now, in this case, Kayla doesn't want to pay that um, bookkeeping correction that there, the five dollars that she owes, nor that lost materials processing fee, but she is going to pay for the replacement card. And so you can see in this case that we've selected that bill. It's reflected in the owed for selected, which says two dollars. Uh, build for selected $2. You can see nothing is paid yet. And then over here in the um, highlighted area is where we're going to input the amount of money that uh, she is handing us. So we have this bill selected for $2. And we're going to input the money. We're going to decide what type of money she's using, whether it be cash or something else. Um, if you have the annotate box selected, it's going to uh, open another modal where you can add some more text, some more explanation. In this case, it's saying that it's a replacement card and then there are some initials as well as the library. Your local workflow may prescribe that and it may not. And now you can see that that bill is gone and the amount that Kayla still owes is 
updated as well, reflecting just the two remaining bills. Now, if I go into the history, I can see that that $2, which is put in as a grocery amount, has been paid. There is no balance on that. You can also see that as part of that bookkeeping correction, um, that there, there was that $15, but then that has actually been, um, that has been updated. And, and so that reflects as well what you're seeing in the, the other screen. Here I am selecting this, um, this record. And I can see as part of that, um, some, some, I can do actions on selected things within the bill history, whether it is to add more billing to it, to print that for the patron or for bookkeeping purposes, or to view the full details. And then I can also uh, do the same thing with payments, selecting one of those payments, it will um, activate the actions button and actions menu. And you can see that there's only one option there, which is to view the full details.